John, Captain John guides out of the Charleston Kiowa area and today John's going to talk to us about the three kind of most popular redfish rigs. Their high water technique will use a popping cork with anywhere from an 18 to 36 inch leader. Works well with redfish, trout, flounder. Um, so you got a strike indicator with your float. Uh, redfish, when it's cooler, they're more going after their nose. They're going to smell the bait. Once it warms up a little bit, they get a little more aggressive. You give it a couple tugs on the line, these brass beads jiggle around, it mimics bait on the surface and creates a popping action. It really works well with trout. You can get them fired up, but redfish will get just as fired up on it as well. They usually make them some sort of bright color so they're easy to see. I always recommend having a couple different colors so when you and your fishing partner, you realize which one's going under. One's got a chartreuse, the other one's got a pink. Um, we'll usually tie something in between 10 and 20 pound mono leader. Uh, sometimes in the winter months we'll do a fluorocarbon when the water gets a little cleaner and clearer. Right now it kind of looks like tea to chocolate milk so it really doesn't matter what you're tying on. Um, usually I'll, well, today we were just using a little little jig head. I'll usually use a little one or a two aught circle hook or, and a circle rig and then we'll also put a split shot weight or one of these jig heads do quite well as, as well. I like the circle hook just because it helps you with the hook set and you don't have to worry about the float as much when it goes under. That circle hook usually turns them right in the corner of the mouth. This is a good, it works well with kids because you got the, the visual aspect with the float and watching the float and keeping it going under, it doesn't take as much feel. Uh, also, if you're fishing over oysters or structure, you can adjust the length of your leader and you're not worried about getting hung up all the time. A lot of times we like to, you don't want to cast right on top of the fish because they will be a little spooky, especially in the winter or the clear month, water months. Uh, so if you can just kind of float it in there and drift it in there, you can get up current, let the float take your bait where you want, it lets your bait kind of act a little natural and swim around, then when it goes under, start reeling, you got a fish on. Uh, probably one of our most popular rigs that works year-round and probably one of my favorites um, Named after the area we live. It's called a Carolina rig. Basically what you do is you have a swivel You will tie your leader on here. Um, like I said in the warmer months We're using anything from 10 to 20 pound monofilament I usually like it a little bit lighter than the braid because if you do get hung up you pop it off and it's if I've got 20 pound braid, if I'm using an 18 pound leader, it'll usually just pop the hook off. I don't have to tie a total new rig. Um, usually use anywhere from a quarter ounce up to an ounce weight. It all depends on the current with these big tides that we have here. Uh, but I like to put a little swivel in there to keep it from tangling up as much. I love the egg weights because when the fish pulls on this hook, it, it doesn't have any resistance. It pulls the line through there. On these rods, they're really sensitive. You feel it instantly. Uh, the circle hook helps out. It does as long as you keep some pressure on it. The hook almost sit, they almost set the hook on themselves. This works for flounder, black drum, redfish, a little bit of everything. The only thing I would change it out for a sheephead is I would use a different style hook, maybe like a owner mosquito hook or a little J hook, because uh, they do have such crazy teeth and and are tougher to hook. Uh, last but not least. We will put a jig head on there. This works well with bait and artificials. If you like casting a little more and the fish are a little more aggressive, put your favorite soft plastic on there, maybe a Z-Man soft plastic or a gulp scented bait. Uh, thread it on here, that way you can change out colors pretty easy. Uh, it all depends on the current and how clear the water is and how spooky the fish are with the size. This is probably, we were going a little heavier today fishing some structure and we were fishing crab instead of an artificial so I went a little heavier and stuck a half ounce jig head on there. Um, they're J-style hooks, so you do have to kind of set the hook a little bit. This gives you a little more transition where you can actually, when the fish are a little more aggressive, you can slowly reel it. Um, does well. Mud minnows and, and finger mullet will hook them through the lips, through the bottom up, go through the bottom lips, out through the top. Shrimp, if they're dead, I'll pinch the tails off, thread them through, all the way up the jig head just like you would a grub. If they're alive, I will hook them through the head in between uh, their brain and and their organs. So you'll see them in between the two little black spots and circle it through. That way the bait will still swim and be lively. If you want to sit it still, you can chunk up mullet and let the scent do the work. Or like today, we were quartering blue crabs up and using this rig as well.